Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today is going to be the start of a new series that teaches you how to code your very own website. Over the course of this series you'll learn the very basics of HTML and CSS and then go a bit more advanced and in-depth and when you're all comfortable with that I'll introduce JavaScript and jQuery a little later too. So let's start off from the very beginning. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is the basic language that makes up every single web page on the internet. It is extremely complicated at first glance, but I assure you, once you understand the basic rules and syntax, you'll pick it up extremely fast. However, before we go any further, we need to set up a programming environment for you to begin learning in. Now, there are a lot of programs available that you can code in, for example, Notepad++, Sublime Text Editor, or even the default notepad that comes standard with Windows will do it. However, I find my favourite program, and the one that I feel makes coding the easiest, is called Brackets. Brackets is a very powerful program dedicated to coding websites and anything to do with web design. And the best part of it is it's open source and completely free. So to get Brackets, go to www.brackets.io or just click the link in the description. And you want to click the download Brackets without extract button just under the big blue button on the homepage. Uh, if you are a Mac or a user, there is uh, other downloads here and you can click that and you just want to download the the file that applies to you, so the latest release, and then if you're a Mac user, the .dmg file, if you're a Debian user, then the .deb file that corresponds to your uh, bit, so this is 32-bit and that's 64-bit. Um, so yeah, and you, the reason you don't want to get the one with Extract is because Extract is a, an extra program that just complicates things at the moment and you won't need it for now, so just ignore it for now, just get the one without Extract. So. Once that's downloaded, I'm just going to cancel it because I've already got it downloaded. And um, once that's downloaded, you just want to open up brackets, and this is what you'll see first. So this is the welcome page. Before we get into any of this, um, we're going to start off uh, changing a few settings. So first thing we need to do is click on the edit button up here and click auto close braces, um, and that just basically makes our lives easier in the future. You'll see, you'll see why. And uh, the second thing is highlight active line because that just makes it easier to see which line you're on. As you can see, it's got uh, this grey highlight along whichever line you're selected on. So um, yeah, and this is the basic open, uh, the welcome page. Over here you've got which files are open in the editor. Down here you've got the folder. Um, this is basically, you'll see it like this, and you've got your CSS for the page, and you've got your, your index, um, which is the, the actual HTML of the website. And if you go over to the, here, to the right hand side, there's extension manager and live preview. Now if you click the live preview button, you're gonna pop up telling you that it only works in Chrome and stuff. So if you don't have Chrome, you're gonna have to get it to, for this to work. Um, but then you'll see here, and you can see here, if I go over any of this, um, it'll actually highlight the corresponding um, part in blue on the live preview. And you can make changes in real time, so um, you could change this to whatever you want. And uh, it will update in real time, and it, it's really, really handy, because then if you break anything, you see straight away. And uh, a couple of cool features with brackets that's worth knowing about. You can go through all the menus and have a look at all these. They've got loads and loads and loads of uh, shortcut keys and things. Um, but some uh, some notable ones are if you press Control Shift and the up and down arrows, you can actually move a line around without having to like cut or paste it. And another one is if you go Alt Shift and press like down or up, you can actually extend the cursor up or down, and then that lets you. Um, that lets you select multiple lines. So say if I wanted, uh, uh, I'm trying to find somewhere where I'll just do it right at the top. Um, if I wanted both of these lines to be selected, I could press Control and Shift, go down, and then I could actually edit both of these together. So I could just do them all at the same time. And um, you can see you can just edit them all at the same time, which is really handy. Now, um, we're going to start a new document. So you can close this in the working file. Don't I'm not going to save that. Uh, and to, to do this, you want to click here, left click here, and click open folder. And I've already got a web uh, a thingy set up for me, so this is the demo website folder. And at the moment, it's completely empty. So we want to go, uh, we can either right click here and click new file, or we can go file, new, and this won't save anything. So we need to save this as, uh, we're going to save it as index.html. And um, basically, when you upload something to a, serv uh, to a web server, index.html is where it looks for the very first page. Um, of any website, so we need to do this. And the next thing we need to do is tell the web browser uh, what it needs to, like what what it should class, uh, whatever file it is, as. So in our case, it's HTML. Um, I'm just going to reload the 
preview so you can see what's going on as I do it. Um, but yeah, so we need to tell it that it's HTML. So to do this in HTML, you type in um, open weird ass triangly black brackets, uh, so less than, and then uh, you type in doc type and then space HTML and then close. And um, it's auto completed that, but you don't actually need that there. Um, Sorry, there should be an exclamation mark there. It's, it's exclamation mark doc type HTML. That's why it uh, closed the thing. So if I type it again, so doc type space HTML. So um, that tells the the, uh, the web browser what type of document it, that it's trying to read. So then what you need, the basic skeleton, the basic structure is um, made up of these tags. And these tags, basically, they have uh, an open and a closed tag. So the first tag that everything goes inside is HTML. Anything outside of this, these two tags won't be classed as HTML. So this is very, very important that you need uh, that you have these these tags. So um, you always have the the less than and then the tag and then the greater than and then the the closing like version of that tag just has a, has a slash here. So um, what you want to do is press tab across again and um, you always have a head. Now the head is basically a header. And um, inside the header, there's a couple of things that go, but basically this isn't displayed on the web page. As you can see, when I click on this, it doesn't like highlight anything on here. But if I click on HTML, it highlights the whole document. But the head basically is code that needs to run before the body is loaded, but it's uh, it's not stuff that needs to be shown. So um, next thing we need is a body. So this is where all the content goes. So this is the tag for a body. And um, in body is, you can see here, it's everything. There is a little bit of a margin around it. It's not the entire document like this, but it, it is um, where all the uh, where all the content goes for the website. So that is basically the HTML structure for this. You inside your body, you have all the content. Inside the head, you have any code that needs to run before the body, uh, before the body is loaded, essentially. So uh, one thing that all websites should have is a title. So we're going to type in title, and this isn't the title that you'd expect with just um, with like at the top of the page. What it is actually is up here in the tab, it's the title there. So we're going to call this demo website. And you can see that changing in real time right now. That's the beauty of this program. It's a really, really powerful program. And then another thing we're going to have, I'm just going to put a space here so it makes it a little bit nicer to see. Um, and then in body, there's loads and loads of different things that you can do. Uh, at the moment, that's all we need to know about for head. Um, and you don't need to really worry about anything else. Um, but for the moment, uh, yeah, that's fine. So uh, in your body, what you want to do is you want to create a heading. So H, which stands for heading, and then there's H1, H2, H3, H4, H6, uh, H5, and H6. So there's six types of these. So we're going to call this heading one. And then we're going to create another one. Just I'm just going to demonstrate all the different headings and what they do. And this one's going to be heading two. And as you can see, they're getting smaller. So if I go across here, I've got um, all of the headings up to H6 all typed out, and you can go like this. And this is something that um, that control, uh, the Shift Alt feature comes in really handy with, because I could press Shift Alt and go down here, and I could just completely edit this word. So say I wanted to change it to title, I could do that super super easy. Um, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it as heading. So yeah, that's that's all of the uh, the headings. Now the next thing you need to know is um, that um, one thing. By the way, this is zoomed in quite a lot. I'd zoomed in so that you could see, and also uh, this is zoomed in too. So um, another thing that you can do is P, and that stands for paragraph. And in your paragraph is where you put all your like the body of your text. And as you can see, heading six is actually uh, and heading five are actually a tiny bit smaller than the paragraph. So um, these ones uh, might come in handy a little bit later. You can change all the font sizes, of course, with CSS, but that comes uh, in the in the next episode of this series. So um, yeah, you've got paragraphs here, and you, then you've got another one. If I'm going a bit too fast, uh, feel free to pause and and replay the video. By the way, and um, you got another one, which is the link. So the link tags always start with A, and I don't know why, but they just do. So anything that's a link always has. A as the tag. Now, because this is a link, um, it needs to point somewhere. So the way that we do this is href, and this basically is a HTML reference. Okay, and we set that equal to 
and then wherever we want. Now that's trying to set it to a file. It's got these. Um, this program's brilliant because it's got all of these things where it tries to predict what you're going to do. So um, it's a bit like Excel in that way, or Visual Studio if you ever use that. Um, but we don't want it to select a file, otherwise it would point to a file. What we want it to do actually is um, we're going to want it to point to say Google. So to do that, we need to put HTTP. Now this is really important because without it, it will try and look for Google on the server that the uh, that you're like hosting the website on. So um, if I just I'll, I'll demonstrate. If I just type in www.google.google.com and then uh, I'll show you how you close the link just now. Um, the way that you do it is you do a close bracket, uh, the program will automatically insert the other one and then you can type whatever you want your link text to be in the middle. Um, now when you click that it says cannot get google.com because it's not on this server. So I'm just going to close this and reopen the uh, live preview. And if we add in HTTP, I missed my P key like three times, um, you'll see when I click link it should take us to Google. There we go. So I'm going to reload that again so it doesn't break. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do a link. Uh, there's another thing that you could do. You could do bulleted lists. And in HTML, they're called unordered lists. So UL stands for unordered lists. It's really logical, this, this, this language. It's really logical. And then you want, so you want an unordered list. You've told it that. And then you want list items. So for that, LI, list. It's like the beginning of list, list item. And um, just close the tag, and you can type in whatever you want. Unordered. And then you want another one? Sure, just li, list item. List. Unordered list. And then there's another type of list too. Can you guess what it is? It's ordered list. So ol. So you can see it's a really logical like language. And once you've got the hang of it, it's actually really, really simple and really easy. It's just at first glance, it looks really, really um, odd. By the way, it's really important that you keep this good um, good management of like layout and things. Tabs and spaces and things do not do not matter in HTML, but it matters to me. So <laughs> basically what I'm saying is um, I managed to turn that into, I think I pressed my insert key by accident, it turned into like an under cursor thing. But yeah, if it's just all like this and there's no none of these spaces or anything here, um, it gets really, really confusing at times because you can't quite see where things are going. And another thing to help you with this is um, where there's an extension called Collapse. Um, yeah, called Code Folding. And uh, Code Folding, basically, I will install that now. And um, I'll restart just after I've done this. Um, and it basically lets you collapse code um, at the open and close brackets and things. So. Yeah, so we want to add some list items to this. So we want ordered list. And as you can see here on the right, it's got the number one and the number two. And you can just keep adding these list items until, well, forever. So um, until you run out of numbers, which is never. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool and really, really easy. So I'm just going to quickly save this and I'm going to restart the program really quickly. Uh, this is just that this plugin loads, and basically you can see here you can actually collapse these things. So if I wanted to collapse the entire body, it will collapse the, all the body. If I want to just collapse this list, I can collapse that. But really, all I use it for, I don't really collapse things because I think it makes it look even more confusing. What I use it for the most is just as a visual cue, so that I know like this is the start of a new thing, of like a new thing that has things in it. This is the start of another thing that has things in it, and it's really for me. It's just sort of like to help my brain, but. Um, you guys might use it quite a lot, uh, especially when you get to things like tables, and I will show you how to do tables in a minute. Um, just after I show you how to how to uh, do images and things. So, if we want an image, uh, the way that we do it is we type image or img um, in the way that image is spelt without any vowels. So we want an image, and then we want the source to be equal to, and then we want to put a file in here. So at the moment we've got nothing in here. I'm just going to click Show and Explorer here. Right-click it and click Show and Explorer, and this has brought up this. This is where the web page, uh, where the thing is. So if we wanted to, I could just um, I'm going to move that over to that side, and I'm just going to go to Google.com, and I'm going to go. I could have just clicked my link, couldn't I? Um, I'm going to go and search for a cat. So there we go. There's that's a cute cat. Let's save that as uh, as an image in this folder. So you'll see here, it'll appear in here, uh, download.jpg. So what we want to do is uh, 
in here, if we actually get rid of these um, and then retype them, it will prompt me if I want to do this. So you can press the up and down arrow keys to go through these and to select the one that you want, just press enter and it will automatically insert that for you. And then you can just close the tag. Now we don't need a, um, we don't need it to be like this. We don't need um, any text in here. So we don't need to worry about that. And um, I've broken my live preview, which is why it's not come up on this side. But yeah, this would be a waste of space. Um, and the way that you can close a, a tab, if it doesn't need um, a tag, sorry, if it doesn't need anything between it, any text or anything like a link does, as you can see here, the link, it closes, there's text and then it, well, say the tag is, the open tag is here and then there's the text and then there's the close tag. This is an image, so it doesn't need one. So um, I've broken my live preview, so I'm just going to reload that. Um, if you navigate away in the live preview window, it does break a little bit. But um, yeah, as you can see here now, we've got our cat photo. And um, it's it's really cool the way this works. So this does work, but to save space and time, you just do slash and then the greater than symbol. And uh, that will just close the tag all in one. So you don't need more than one tag. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to do tables. Now, tables are a little bit more complex. Um, you have to create a table by doing this. I'm going to create some spaces and you'll see why in a minute. And then, um, so that's created a table, believe it or not. It's not there at the moment though. If I click on this, you'll see it's not there um, because there's no rows. So we want a table row. So TR stands for table row. And then we can close that. And I'm just going to put a couple more spaces in here. Now in the table row, we want some data. So TD for table data. And then we want um, row one data one. Now I'm going to copy this. There is a shortcut key to do this. I can't remember what it is right now. Um, that's not it. But in here somewhere there is a shortcut key. Yeah, control and D to duplicate. So I'm just going to duplicate this three times um, and move that up. And we're going to change this to data three and this one to data two. So you can see here now we've got this. Now to make it a little bit easier to see I'm going to add some CSS to this. Don't worry about this. This is just so that you can see a little bit easier. But basically, if you type border here, we'll put a little border around it, and um, it makes it a little bit uh, nicer to look at. So that's the first one. Now, if I copy this and press Control D a couple of times, um, I'm just going to move these down so you can see them a little bit easier. Um, now we've created three of these rows. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more as well so you can see a bit better. Um, so this is row two. I'm going to do the little trick with the, uh, with the cursor to do this. Row two and row three. So now you can see you've got row one data one, row one data two, row one data three, row two data one, row two data two, row two data three, and stuff. So that is how a table works. And this is why I really like that plugin that I just showed you, because um, with that plugin, um, I seem to have some weird spaces in here. Don't worry, spaces don't affect anything, by the way. I did say that, didn't I? Um, yeah, with that plugin, um, you can actually um, close these up, so they're really, really. It's really handy for tables. That's basically the only thing that I use it for. So you can see here is the entire table, and if I click here, it will highlight the corresponding um, tags. And then there's my first row, my second row, and my third row. Um, but yeah, so here you can see that I can close the entire table if I want to, if I don't need to edit that anymore, or I could just say close this one and this one, so I could just work on that one without having to worry about any of these. And um, it's basically just a cool feature. It helps you you see what's going on because half the challenge with HTML is actually like your brain trying to figure out where, what the hell's going on and what you're looking at. For me, I've um, I've seen all of this. Like I've been coding in HTML for a few years, so for me, looking at this, I understand it all as if it was English. But um, I know for a lot of new people, um, it takes a while. And also remembering these tags and things. Don't worry, you're going to have to come back to this video quite a few times probably if you're doing it right. And you're going to have to keep using HTML to, to remember it. Um, all of these tags, they, they're not interchangeable by the way. You can't just put your own tag and expect it to do what you want. Um, there is a language um, that we'll get into maybe in the future if, if this series is big enough. It is a completely separate language, but um, you could basically make up your, your own tags. And uh, But it, it's more for formatting than just, you can't just like tell it to do something and it just does it. Um, it's not quite that clever, it's for like formatting and things. So um, yeah, that, that's the thing. But this is the very, very basics that you need to create your own web page. So you, you can probably imagine with it, with like, you can have the heading, you can have a, a heading for your web page, you can have a, a 
like a subheading and then you can have some paragraph text with maybe some links in it. Uh, you can have a couple of pictures, maybe a list, um, maybe a table with some data in it. And um, yeah, so it, it's all, it's it's the very basics and you could probably, you're probably asking why is all the fonts the same and stuff, Why? how do I change that and things. We'll get to that a bit later because that's a separate language. Um, it's called CSS which is this cascading style sheet and that will be what the next uh, video is about, the basics of CSS. So um, I really do hope that you've learned something from this. I, I know I've gone quite fast but the whole, the whole idea is I give you the building blocks and then you go away and you teach yourself how to do it. So this is the information that you need and I want you to go away and practice this and, um, and teach yourself how to, how to do all of this. So I really do hope you've learned something from this and um, as I said, if you have any questions, uh, there's my Facebook, my Twitter or just leave a comment down below. Um, I try to reply to everything that I get. Um, so I really do hope you've learned something from this. Uh, if you're really, if you're enjoying the series, please don't hesitate to give a, give me a thumbs up. If you really love it, make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Um, there's going to be a lot more of this to come. Uh, I really, really do want to spread my knowledge with you guys because um, I think it's really interesting and I really like. You can probably tell how enthusiastic about it I am, but I really do enjoy like coding and things. So I really do hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, there'll be plenty more to come. Don't you worry, and I will catch you in the next one. See you later.